podcasting. Taz Mellis joining us live. Deuce Mason, Morgan Reagan. How you doing, Taz? I'm doing so good, guys. It's great to be on with you guys. I, I totally feel like I understand you guys too. You know, we're, yeah. we're like buds who have never spoken a word to each other before. Totally. Dude, it is weird because I mean, I've seen your face for years, yes. heard your voice for years. And yeah, I, and of course, see you on social media all the time. So I'm so glad we have you on to talk some hoops. Um, it's been a wild ride in Sacramento. I know you guys have been talking about it a lot. Uh, what, what's been the kind of the biggest surprise to you about the King season? Well, yes. The, and it has, I think, been the biggest surprise to me of everybody on our show because I've been the biggest hater, I think. I didn't expect this to happen before the other guys did. They were on board when Mike Brown took the reins and just believed, I guess, in the, the star power and the growth of De'Aaron Fox this year before the season even started. So I've been labeled some names on our show. <laughs> I think I think some Kings fans come on over and, uh, you know, this is the time where Kings fans are shining. Uh, oh, yeah. so they want to see some coverage. And uh, when they don't and when they get some uh, some bad coverage, I hear about it, which is good. Uh, um, I guess the biggest surprise is just how everything has come together so effortlessly. And like, like you guys, just, you know, just briefly said, and I'm sure you've talked about it for the first two hours of your show because you guys are animals. Uh, that was an incredible game. The buzz that the Kings have every game now. Uh, that that was such a good game. Like from a, a a person who has no dog in the race whatsoever. That was just a fun basketball game and I mean high level execution. You guys consume so much basketball because obviously you cover the entire league. You're watching so many games before talking about it on your pod the next day. And I look at last night and that's why even as Kings fans, like I would say Deuce and I like to be realistic for the most part. Like you said, going into the season, um, I was like, oh, they'll be in the play in conversation, like not the playoffs. Like how could anything develop that quickly? Right. And then you're seeing them against the Bucks in March in this competitive, beautiful basketball game. And I know at times it can seem surprising, but it's not a fluke. And that's been my favorite part about it. What is what have you seen that is making the Kings so good right now. Yeah, we talk about this uh, night in and night out. The league night in and night out for years and years and years. So coming into this season, you know, I, I always try and fall back on actual research, like actual work I, we all do uh, in this field. And so I went back and I was looking at the defensive rankings of this team and thought, ain't no way this team can be in the playoffs. There's just it's just it's not going to break from that pattern uh no, no matter what mike brown does and then i guess the biggest surprise is to have that really not matter all that much because they've been so incredible on the other end and how fluid it is yeah. and it going from one through ten i mean everything that monty mcnair touched turned to gold on that end <laughs> like we're talking yeah uh the, the, even the rotation last night off the bench Kessler uh, Edwards like well yeah. he, he didn't have his best game last night but even him in the other game but Trey Lyles how about how about Trey Lyles yeah, yeah I haven't you know as a Canadian and uh as a fellow Canadian as and uh, I've never been a, a true believer in, in Trey Lyles and he's gone through you know a couple uh roller coaster I guess you'd call it of a yeah. career uh and now he's found a home like the locker room has to be absolutely incredible for guys like Trey Lyles and Terrence Davis, who also you know, being, being a Raptor pri previously, they've just had some ups and downs. And I say it's got to be an incredible locker room for all these guys to absolutely fit like puzzle pieces to to just jump right in and yeah, you throw Kessler Edwards' name out there. I mean, it, it is wild. Like that was one as a as a national media member that was one trade that just absolutely went under the radar it was cool to see <laughs> yeah. it's cool to see the kings adding for a need i mean they, they obviously need some wing uh defense and that was a guy who was you know solid last year for the nets and and them trying to find themselves and he was just sort of a surrounding part for kevin durant but he barely played this season and again he comes to the the kings defends devin booker pretty freaking well um and uh, yeah he's just he's again it's it's got to be the locker room morgan to sort of answer your question but not yeah. answer your question all at the same time but like to come all the way back around i mean they have yeah mike brown's just done it i mean it's it's 
there's it's it's kind of like like I, like we said before the season, it was hard to really peg this team as a playoff team. But there's always a surprise in the NBA, and it's always impossible as as long as we've been talking about the game to really project who that surprise is going to be. And it's obviously the Kings this season. Well, I know we we're just talking about Trey Lyles. I was curious from last night's game, what do you make of the end of the game? <laughs> Where like Giannis, who by the way, I don't feel like enough people are talking about the Giannis angle of this, and I'm not mad at this at all. It just, you know, he veers right to dribble in front of Lyles. Lyles did not like it. Fouls him, pushes him, and then Lopez <laughs> and him get tangled up. What do, you, what do you think of that whole thing? I'm team Giannis on this one. Uh, he's allowed what? to he's allowed to dribble the basketball i know like i think I, you're right you're gonna make me start hating on Giannis now he dribbled right into him for no reason Giannis fools everyone he's mr nice guy but he does some weird things on the and floor and by the way we are Giannis lovers oh, I'm, i love Giannis. <laughs> And then you know what he did then he did he, him and lopez lopez and Lyles are going at it Giannis is in the background with his hands up. I, I love that two people that cover the Kings are trying to convince Taz who covers the it's entire Giannis's league. Fault. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely no way you can put this on Yanis yeah, Tedokounmpo's shoulders. No chance. He's allowed to go towards the sideline. That's where I think he was going. Because at the end, he just wants to dribble out the clock. That's what players do. They don't dribble in the middle of the floor. Like he could have just stood there. You're right. He could have just dribbled out. Mm -hmm. I dribbled it. No one would have touched him. There would have been no, no scuffle whatsoever. But that's what players do. They kind of go to. It's a weird thing. They kind of go past the midcourt line and they kind of go to the corner, and that's where I think he was going. I don't think he was trying to get under Trey Lyles. Oh. Yeah, that, I, I think Yadis yeah, isn't that type of dude. Is he fooling everybody? It's a yes. great long con. <laughs> I mean, he's been the nicest dude in the league for he a is. decade. Now he's going at Trey Lyles. That's who he's picking his feud with. with we Trey need Lyles. you guys to take this video, break it down on yeah. your show tomorrow, and break down. We have different camera views we need to tag I, in. Yeah, and and really, I think oh. you guys might think differently of Giannis tomorrow. Mm, I like it. I like it. We need it. Yeah. I haven't seen... You know, basically, I saw the main camera. Yeah. And... I was fine with it watching it. I was fine with Brooke coming over. Yeah. And I think Lyles was the instigator. Is that is that reasonable to say? I mean, you no. guys I'm think, sending him the no. video. I, I I think Lyles, I mean, Lyles got, uh, he was worked up. He should, it's whatever. I actually like the whole thing, to be honest. I like yeah. that stuff in the NBA. It's fun. You know, there, no one got hurt from it. it no. It's intense. It was, like we just said, it was such a great game. It was right. a physical game. We saw a lot of offense. Giannis was incredible. 46 points. No one could stop him on the Kings. It was just a really, really fun basketball game. And to top it off with a little, little chaos at the end, is, I loved it. Is Giannis your MVP? Ooh, baby. It's tough. <laughs> I, th I think it's, I think... It's not my Greek heritage speaking, uh, but I think in the end, I think I am going to go with him. I, I reserve the right to, you know, wait a month here. We got sure. four weeks left. Absolutely. I, I, I do think the fact that Joel Embiid is coming on strong and Jokic is where Jokic is, is in Yanis's favor because those two are going to take a lot of, uh, they're sort of going to be neck and neck and beat it in Jokic and they're going to be at the top. And I think a lot of people when it comes to voting, are going to say, well, the default guy is that um, we're just going to go with that guy. Uh, and, and Giannis being the default guy who is probably the best player of all of them and, and the player that everyone would pick in a series. So I think the fact that those other two have you know, kind of projected themselves towards the top, it's going to help Giannis's. So I think that might factor into the way I look at it at the end, especially with the way they're going to take the number one seed and the best rank or the best record in the entire NBA. I, I think that's going to be theirs. So yeah, I think Giannis might take it, and uh, yeah, the, so many things factor into it for sure. Uh, you right. know, the voter fatigue and all and all that. Uh, but I think I think he will be my guy when it comes down to it, with the way he's carried his team without Chris Middleton for a huge chunk of the season, and them going to be the number one team, not only in the East but in the NBA. Yeah, he's just ridiculous. Just watching him last night, I'm just like seen him play so many times, but you're just like, how do you stop this guy? And last Freak. night he's hitting threes in the mid range, what he does defensively getting to the basket, uh, which is, I just appreciate watching a player like him, yep. you know, cause he's one of the greats of all time. And sometimes we get jaded watching games all the time and you have to like appreciate the moment because what we're witnessing with him is, is just beyond special. And I mean, of course, what we're witnessing with him is 
um, amazing. And some of these other players in this league that are that top tier, but being in Sacramento right now, Taz, I feel like the other guy that what we're witnessing is just something we haven't really experienced before. And that's Domas Sabonis. Uh, what, you're talking trip dubs all the time. You look at his double, double numbers, but what he's been able to do in this first season, well, I mean, technically last year wasn't a full first season, full whatever. Season, yeah, yeah, first full season to completely help and change the identity of the squad with Mike Brown, with De'Aaron Fox. And we haven't seen anything like this before from a leader that shines, you know, mentally and shines as a teammate in so many different levels. What are you seeing from Domas this season? Yeah, another huge surprise just uh, after the trade. Didn't see the the ability to number one play hurt like he's been playing with the, with the thumb injury and yeah just to exactly right like lead an offense uh, be the the hub be fine with you know uh, not as many shot opportunities I'm sure as he could have uh, and and uh, yeah just uh, that yeah I mean the word is leadership and those are the things like you can't you can't really. Uh, predict in the NBA guys' growth and and both him and Fox doing it in the same season uh, is is why the Kings are in that two seed because they're both so comfortable in their roles they're both excelling in their roles they're both uh, truly they're, they're dominating I felt bad for him last night because Yanis was he had the footwork going and there was like there's nobody in the world regardless of size strength that could stop it. I mean, that guy is just, the footwork is just, is too much, but you know, Domus showed his skills going to the right. Uh, everybody expect him to go to the middle there and then go to the right hand. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a special dude. And this is, you know, team number, team number three for him. And I think in Indiana, like you were just saying, deuce about Giannis and people not appreciating him or, you know, just, just the fact that we kind of, it kind of goes numb watching all these amazing players play the way they do. I think that sort of happened to Domus Sabonis and his skill set mm. in Indiana a little bit. We just kind of were you know, sort of, I, I think, as national media members and fans, just watching that situation and we're kind of over it. It felt like that iteration of the team was done. And, yeah, you kind of just forget about his skill set or, or or forget about how good he was. But he's... You know, especially as the son of an incredible player, yeah, to uh, to be able to thrive. Uh, another thing that's really really difficult. Like he came in with, with OKC and looked skilled, but by no means did anything anyone think he was going to grow to this level of talent. And yeah, he had the talent in Indiana. And now it's just adding all grown up, as Mark Jackson would say. Uh, you know, to to be like a real uh, a real pros pro out there. And uh, again, playing through injury. You know, without him. Yeah. Uh, doing that these last several weeks, who knows where the, the Kings season is. So right now the Kings are the number three seed. I mean, I know they haven't clinched a playoff spot. I feel oh. like we're all in Sacramento. I said two seed. I said two seed because I, well, they, they dropped down to three. No, no, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, they'll probably, they might be the two seed soon. I mean, yeah. Memphis, you know, they're going to have to yeah. play without jaw. Um, either way, I imagine they're going to be top six. I'd be crazy if they fell apart. Um, so let's just put them in the top six. Do you think that they could win a series or two? Because now yeah, it feels like some of the national media is like hopping on strong where they weren't really talking about them all at all. And then like Zach Lowe started last week saying, I could see conference finals. Mm -hmm. Perkins saying it yesterday. You know, Russillo and Simmons saying, could they come out of the West? It seems like it's going the other way now. Where, where do you weigh in on, on maybe the Kings? Can they win a series or two? Depending yeah, on the let's matchup? ride it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board as well. I, they have the great draw. We just talked about Memphis. If they get to that second round, that's who they would likely play if the Grizzlies do get through. And there's not a better matchup in the second round than that, just because of the, the lack of experience on that side, because you look up and down in the Western Conference, it's better than facing, you know, a Nuggets, a Suns, a Warriors, yeah. a Clippers, I would say. So the draw is there. And uh, you know, like you said earlier, Morgan, it's obviously not a fluke. And this is uh, a tough place to play. So in that first round, sure, they should be, they're going to be the favorite. 
And uh, I'm sure they want to get to that two seed to to play a, a play in team rather than those, you know, those bunch of other teams that I mentioned that they would face in a three six like a, a Clippers or a Warriors. I think they'd rather you know get one of those teams that are scurrying down there right now, whether it's the Wolves or or, or the Mavs or somebody like that in round one and, and round two. Yeah, they've they've got a good bracket. Uh, so sure, conference finals. I, I, I it's yeah, crazy. it's it's I possible. Know. It's, it's possible. weird to it it's is. weird to say it, and it yeah. is. Po- it the West is just bizarre. I mean, I think the talent level in this league in general is just absurd. I mean, every night you turn on a game and go, yeah, this guy's really really good. Yep. This guy's awesome. This team has talent, and even in the West, you're going, who is the favorite? I mean, I feel like I've changed my mind eight hundred times. There's a stretch I was feeling Denver a little bit, but. I mean, they, every team has questions at this point. And, and I think when we look at some of these guys, Taz, and go like, oh, who's going to slow down that guy on the team? Who's going to slow down that guy? And then with the Kings, you finally get to say with De'Aaron Fox, who is Mr. Clutch in fourth quarters right now, who's going to slow him down or not allow him to shoot from where he wants to shoot? Well, you saw against the number one defense last night that it can alter things, but not every team is at Still that at 35. level. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and not every team is at that level. Um, we know that J.E. was and always has been that De'Aaron Fox truther. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Taz? How have you felt about De'Aaron Fox over the years and leading into this season? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because I, I haven't been uh, – I, I just didn't know if it was come, if yeah. it was going to come. You know, I was there on board ready to – to watch it happen, but this is, uh, yeah, a different, different beast. Uh, he can get what he wants and he's comfortable on every spot of the floor. And I, I look down at those teams that he would face. And, and like you said, yeah, it was, it was different against a, a, a humongous front court, uh, yesterday, but still, uh, he, he knows where to hit the spots that he can get to in the postseason. The mid range will be open. It's it that's just the way basketball goes in the postseason. They're gonna take away some Kings threes. Uh, but he has the ability to to pull up and is so comfortable there. And if if you take that away from him in the mid range, then he's gonna get to the rim. So if they're facing a team like the Mavs, who have closers of their own, uh, he's gonna rip them apart. Uh they're they're a bad team at the rim uh defensively. And so I think he would get there if he wanted to. And you know, they're a bad team on the perimeter. So I think that would be, even though on the other side, there's you know, two killers there in, in Kyrie and Luca. That would be a really good matchup uh, for the Kings because they would, yeah, they, they would just tear them apart defensively. And I don't think there's any stopping Fox uh, and a Fox led offense and, and the entire Kings offense. So that's uh, yeah, any one of those teams, really. I know that the Wolves would probably be, um, a decent matchup, but Fox is just yeah. so conf- confident in that mid range. Um, you know, it's, that's, that's where the, that's where the, the, the guys who go from good to exceptional in the playoffs mm-hmm. operate. And he can do that right now. Right. Like in, in any quarter, in any moment, I know it's, you know, it's game 85, 86, 87. It may be different than game 60 and 65, but it ain't a fluke. Uh, so, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, Definitely doubted him the last a few years, uh, but the doubts are gone. So why can't he do it in the postseason? Yeah, I can't wait. I'm just so glad we're getting postseason basketball in yeah. Sacramento. Yeah. And like, I, you know, there's some younger NBA fans that obviously don't know what that means, right? Like, it's yeah. been 16 years since they made the playoffs, and there's just something special about the crowd. I think people are starting to see it with the crowds in Sacramento. It's like, dude, this place is a tough place to play. You know, this the crowds get into it. The beams brought people together. I just feel like it's going to be such an incredible atmosphere. I would, I, you know, I want to maybe because we've always been sort of internet buddies, but yeah. I, I, you know, I just, I kind of want to get in the same boat with you guys and say that the raps had this going on when I was uh, a fan a long time ago when they had like a 12 year drought of not winning a playoff series i know it's a little different they did get yeah. there for a couple years in the middle and do nothing really and just uh you know throw throw the ball to uh richard jefferson way back when and, and some weird stuff happened but it, it felt like a really really long hiatus of good basketball in toronto even though they chris bosh led them to a couple playoffs and so i i'm with you i uh 
uh, like I said on the show a couple of weeks ago, we were watching some ugly uh, Toronto Chicago basketball mm. on a, a Monday night. The games, the, the offense was not clicking. And I had a flashback of, you know, the early 2000s when league pass didn't exist. And I was watching ugly Toronto Raptors basketball. We flipped the channel to the Kings OKC game and the offense was beautiful. It was just like when I got league pass for the first time. Like, There's basketball <laughs> outside of Toronto basketball yeah. that's actually you know, fluid uh and and guys can like all five guys can score and it's not just you know dribble 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 type stuff so uh yeah I, i'm with you guys i'm sure um people have not experienced playoff bas basketball in sacramento and uh yeah I, I hope it doesn't last just five or six games for you guys uh, i hope it, you get a second round to uh, to really experience the highs and the lows the drama and uh, the pain that comes yeah. with uh, some losses I know it's like buckle the hell up because yeah. it's yeah. real. You know? Oh, it's tiring. Yeah, oh, it's, it's uh, tiring. <laughs> yeah, yeah the emotional part time. of it, you know. Well, Taz, dude, thank you so much for joining us. Seriously, man. Uh, keep up the great work. We love what you guys right do. Back at it's, you guys. it's so cool to see the growth of no dunks. You guys are, are killing it. So, so definitely keep it up. And just really quick too. I mean, you guys truly inspired us so many years ago into the podcasting world and talking NBA and just your fun, loose style. And we appreciate you guys always giving the love that you do on your show. Yes, I mean, it's yes. like, it's, it's so mind blowing. If I mean, I think about me 10 years ago, if I had known that you guys would even know who the hell I am, <laughs> I would freak out. So just thank you so much, so much. Well, we obviously, uh, we know what hard work is and we see you guys from afar and you guys make us work a heck of a lot harder, even in, you know, because you guys are, you guys are putting in the work here in hour number three of show number, however many here, I've got a, I've got a child with me. Come here. Oh, come here. Get on yeah. I didn't have children that. when I started doing this. Yeah. Show. She's not, she's not a, she doesn't, she, she's just interrupting, but she doesn't want to How join. How old is she? Come on over. Come here. Come here. She's Can asking. Come Noah? here. What? Can you stay with Noah? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh. uh, I appreciate it, guys. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. So. No, sorry I couldn't good. bring on my co-host there. Oh, it's, it's all right. It's ne okay. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Anyways, you guys keep up the good work. Thanks, Tess. Appreciate it, man. We'll we catch up with you soon. It.